Hey guys, my name is Christian Sparks. You may know me online as Hippo Wombat. Uh, today I'm going to be teaching you how to use the Advanced Stars module in my Time of Day Weather and Season Simulation software for Unreal Engine 4 called Orbit Weather and Seasons. Let's get started. So in this scene, uh, I have the Time of Day uh, set to a nighttime setting. Um, currently, the only thing active is the uh, basic star field. Um, we're going to go ahead and activate the advanced star field um, oops, right here. So um, the default settings are kind of insanely bright um, when you activate it. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is uh, lower the star layer intensities and make sure that the nebula intensities are lowered as well. Just bring it down to zero for starters. So really it's nebula 2 um, that is super bright in the beginning, but as you can see there's now um, additional star layers on top of the original one um, and you can actually go through and scale everything. So um, the, the AV <clears throat> star dome scale is just how big the actual dome that contains all the, the star textures is. The AV star dome height um, is just how high up um, in comparison to everything else the actual dome that contains uh, the advanced star field stuff on it is. Um, so the AV star's horizon exponent values as you can see here they just control um, how far up in the horizon the stars will go. Um, and that's for both layers, so you can kind of decrease it, increase it as needed. Um, and then these are the actual, uh, the star 1 and star 2 text variables are just um, textures that you can, uh, you can actually add custom ones for custom star fields. Um, I believe they're globally mapped, um, so don't expect it to wrap onto a dome. Normally it's actually using global coordinates. Um, the AV star's overall visibility variable is going to control, just as it sounds, the overall visibility of the advanced star field. However, um, you can actually tie that visibility to the sun position, which is enabled by default, um, so that the stars will fade out when the sun starts coming up, um, just like it would in real life. Um, the overall brightness um, controls how intense the stars are. Um, the then you can actually control um, individual layer intensities. So you can control layer one or layer two. You can also do the contrast um, that affects the contrast for the actual textures um, and the same with the mapping size. So they're already set to ridiculously huge values because they're mapped globally. Um, but if you like lower these, you can see that the stars are actually much tinier. The offset is just controlling, um, essentially, so with the texture being mapped globally, you can actually offset um, the star map positions on their global coordinates. As you can see, they're kind of peeling out a little bit. And then you can control the overall star color, which isn't really super noticeable. Um, but it is an option. Now getting into the nebula generator, we have nebula text 1 and nebula text 2. Um, these are the actual textures for how the nebula, nebulae, nebulas, I don't know, how they are shaped, <coughs> nebulae, how they're shaped um, in, your, in your sky, and these are also globally uh, mapped. And then the allowance texture is just um, essentially allowing to, a, a mask texture to allow portions of the nebula through. So instead of mapping like a, a symmetric texture across the sky, you can actually allow it through different uh, spots in your sky um, to help you kind of map where the nebulae are. Um, so nebula 1 allowance, uh, let's start with nebula 1 intensity actually. So we'll increase this a little bit and you can start seeing those nebulas forming. Um, now we can do the allowance, um, which is how much uh, they are allowed to push through. And then the contrast controls just how sharp the lines between allowed and not allowed in those fog textures are. 
So we can control the mapping size of the nebula with this value. We can also offset the texture just like you can with the star maps. Um, and you can do an allowance. Uh, and then it's the same thing for Nebula 2. Um, and we actually want to set uh, Nebula 2 allowance contrast to something like 0 and start bumping this intensity value up. Um, and then we can see the second layer of Nebulae, Nebulae uh, coming onto the screen. So it's the same for 1 that is, that is for 2 for intensity contrast mapping, offset, um, allowance, allowance contrast. Um, then we get into nebula clustering exponents. So this is uh, controlling how cloudy um, the nebula or the nebula uh, texture is versus how much it looks like actual clumps of stars. So if you start playing with this, you'll see it actually scales into individual stars that are just clustered together, or you can soften that contrast a little bit to make them look a bit cloudier, and then you can control the scale. Um, of the clustering to expand it out a little bit. And the colors at the bottom obviously just control the colors of the nebula clouds. So that's pretty much it for the uh, Orbit Advanced Starfield tutorial. I hope you found this useful. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them in the comments section below. If you want to see more tutorials like this, uh, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.